I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 15. And this is about the burden of Moab. Isaiah 15 and verse 1, it says, The burden of Moab. Because in the night, Ar of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Because in the night, Ker of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. So this Ar and Ker, major cities in Moab, and the burden of Moab, the burden is the prophecy that's on Isaiah's chest against Moab. He's got this burden on his chest that he's got to get out against the Moabites. It says, in the night. Think about that. You know, this isn't just history. It's also prophecy as well, picturing something that's yet to come. And this is in the night. And what does Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ come back as at the second coming? As a thief in the night. He comes back like a thief. You know, in Job chapter 2, when it uh, gives that description of us coming back with the Lord at the second coming, it says we enter in at the windows like a thief. It's like a thief in the night. Silence, it says. They're brought to silence. You know, let every mouth be stopped and all the world become guilty before God. You know, just sometimes you need to shut up, quit talking, admit you're guilty, and just say, I'm guilty, and let that be it. He's going to bring these Moabites to silence. They're brought to silence. And you know where Moab, the Moabites came from, Genesis nineteen thirty seven that incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughters. Look what came from that. You know, look, uh, if you think about the relationship between Abraham and Hagar that brought the Ishmaelites. You know, I've, before you enter it, before you jump into a relationship with somebody that you're not supposed to be in a relationship with, think about the line of people that might come from that relationship. That's something to think about. But they're brought to silence. And Isaiah 15, 2 says, He has gone up to Bajeth and to D Dibon, the high places, to weep. So Moab goes up to these places to weep. And these are the Bajeth and Dibon. Those are Moab cities that's going to be overrun. That's where they got their high places. And they're going up there to weep. The high places, that's where they worship their false gods. And they're going up there to weep, to call upon their gods. It's not going to be able to help them. It says, Moab shall howl over Nebo and over Mediba. There's some of their false gods. And it says, on all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. That's a sign of mourning. They're shaving their head. They're cutting off their beards. A sign of mourning. Trying to get a hold of their God. It's uh, It pictures disgrace and humiliation. And they're crying and mourning to get their God's help. But they can't get their God's help. Now, the chapter 15 will line up with the 15th book of the Bible, which is the book of Ezra. Remember, I've been telling you what each chapter, you know, Isaiah has 66 chapters that coincides with the 66 books of the Bible. And I got Isaiah, or Ezra, I mean, Ezra 9.3, or 9, yeah, Ezra 9.3 wrote down. So I'm going to read you that real quick. It says in Ezra 9, 3, And when I heard this thing, I ripped my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down a stonied. So you see, this, Ezra talks about the cutting off the hair and the beard just like chapter 15 of Isaiah. So you got the 15th book lining up with the 15th chapter. And, you know, not all of them are, are just giving you a wow factor there. But, you know, still, nonetheless, it's it's pretty amazing how I can find stuff in Isaiah 15. And I can find the same thing in Ezra, the 15th book of the Bible. So what you got going here in Isaiah is 
historically the Assyrian coming through, got the Assyrian is who, is who God is just using to kill people out of judgment. And that's what you have here is the Assyrian going to come through, wipe out the Moabites, doctrinally the Antichrist is going to come through and wipe everybody out. And they're going to their false gods, Nebo and Mediba, but they're not going to be able to help them. And it says in Isaiah 15, 3, in their streets they shall gird themselves with sackcloth. Another thing people do when they're in mourning, on the tops of their houses and in their streets, everyone shall howl and weep abundantly. Isn't it amazing how you can go from party clothes to mourning clothes? Just in one night, you can go from scoffing to crying. That's a, a that should wake you up a little bit. It says in verse four, Heshbon shall cry, and Alila, their voice shall be heard even unto Jahaz. Therefore, the armed soldiers of Moab shall cry out, His life shall be grievous unto him. Look at that. Heshbon shall cry. Even the armed soldiers shall cry out. Grown, strong, armed soldiers will cry. You think about Revelation 6 and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men. And every bondman and in the free man hid themselves and in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from him that sitteth upon the throne from the wrath of the Lamb for the day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? The mighty men are going to run. And cry. Just like the armed soldiers here. They're going to cry out. His life will be grievous unto him. Life is tough. The way of transgressors is hard. You know life's tough. You need to get a helmet. As the saying goes. But you better make sure it's the helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6. Or it's not going to do you any good. And. His life shall be grievous unto him. You know, you're rejecting God and going about your own way because you think life serving the Lord will be boring. Well, your life's just going to be grievous unto you. You need to put on the helmet of salvation. No weapon formed against it shall prosper. It. Isaiah 54, 17. Verse 5. My heart shall cry out for Moab. His fugitives shall flee unto Zoar. That's where Lot fled when he left Sodom and Gomorrah, remember? Once again, uh, you know, the Lord talks about as in the days of Lot. That's what it's going to be like in the tribulation, as in the days of Lot. And the tribulation and second coming, fire and brimstone. Once again, putting you like in a tribulation second coming context here. It says, an heifer of three years old, for by the mounting of Lueth, with weeping shall they go it up. For in the way of Horonaim, they shall raise up a cry of destruction. It says, his fugitives shall flee into Zoar, an heifer of three years old. So Moab is the country from which Ruth is from. Remember that? And Moab, the Moabites came from Lot, that incestuous relationship, Genesis 19. As it was in the days of Lot, they flee to Zoar. Remember, that's where Lot, uh, Lot fled to. But they're as helpless as a three-year-old heifer here. It says an heifer of three years old. That's how helpless they are. That's how helpless at the second coming that the nations are going to be when Jesus Christ comes in flaming fire taking vengeance on them. Fire and brimstone is going to be raining on them. Just like happened to Sodom and Gomorrah when he fled to Zoar. It says in verse 6, For the waters of Nimrim shall be desolate. Nimrim like a, was like a Moabite oasis near the Dead Sea. And the waters are going to be desolate. They're going to dry up. You know, they should have got the living water. John 4.10. But they... But they reject the Lord. They don't get the living water. 
So it says, for the hay is withered away, the grass faileth, there is no green thing. Just like in the tribulation, Revelation 8 and verse 7, the first angel sounded and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees was burned up and all green grass was burned up. So you see the picture there, Revelation 9, 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the, earth, uh, hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. But there is going to be grass and green thing and trees burn up in the tribulation. Just like here, you got the grass failing and no green thing as a judgment. It says, therefore, the abundance they have gotten and that which they have laid up shall they carry away to the brook of the willows. But there is no place you can take your earthly treasures that they're not going to fade away. Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Look at that, Matthew 6, 19 through 20. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. There's no place you can take your possessions that they're not going to get rusty and corrupted and where thieves can't break through and steal it. They should have laid up treasures in heaven. It says, therefore, the abundance they have gotten and that which they have laid up They've laid up treasures down here. Shall they carry away to the brook of the willows? It says, For the cry has gone around about the borders of Moab, the howling thereof unto Eglim, and the howling thereof unto Berelim. They cry and howl out to God, but they should have cried and howled out to God before things got this bad. Go ahead and cry and howl out to God before things get bad. It says, For the waters of Diamond shall be full of blood. For I will bring more upon Diamond, lines upon him that escapeth of Moab, and upon the remnant of the land. Once again, picture in the tribulation here, For the waters of Diamond shall be full of blood, just like Revelation 16.4. In Revelation 16 and verse 4, it says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. It says, And the lines upon them that escapeth of Moab. Revelation 6, 8. In Revelation 6, 8, I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth, fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Animals will be more beastly. Seems like the fear of man be taken off of them. There'll be lions coming at you. Lions, tigers, and bears. Lines upon him that escapeth of Moab and upon the remnant of the land. And I got Ezra 9.14 uh, wrote down there as a match, the 15th book of the Bible, matching the 15th chapter. It says, in Ezra 9.14, Should we again break thy, thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou hadst consumed us? so that there should be no remnant nor escaping. So Ezra talks about a remnant, and this talks about an, a remnant escaping, a remnant escaping. So Ezra, the 15th book of the Bible, will match Isaiah, the 15th chapter. And it's not a big, great match there like a lot of the other ones we see, but still a match there nonetheless. But that's just a quick little chapter, only nine verses. And you think about this, you know, the Bible's got 1,189 chapters, and a lot of them are really short like this one. So when you think about it that way, the Bible's not as intimidating as you think it is. You know, you could read a chapter like this in just a few minutes. You could memorize a chapter like this in a day.
a couple of few days. But that's Isaiah chapter 15. I know that I probably didn't really give you much, anything too exciting for you there. But we're making our way through the book of Isaiah, the 66 chapters of it. And we'll pick up in Isaiah 16 next time.